Uh, I didn't really want to do anything other than medicine. Ever since I can remember, I wanted to do medicine, even though I didn't really know what that involved. My mum was a nurse, my great aunt was a regional matron, she was one of these scary figures who ran a whole series of hospitals before the NHS came in. And I think it was her tales of hospital life that led me to want to be a doctor, because of course you don't really know what being a doctor is like until you start, and I'm still kind of working it out now. My favourite part of medical school was pretty much everything. I think unlike you guys, I did most of my growing up while at medical school. So I became the person I am as a result of that. I went to Cardiff and I was a home counties boy from near London. And I'm so glad I didn't go to London because it opened my eyes. I was there during the miners' strike and opened my eyes to different perspectives on the world. In terms of the medical training, I really liked anatomy, I really liked physiology. Um, I didn't really understand what being a doctor was until long after I qualified. My first day as a doctor was nothing but great excitement. I felt utterly ill-equipped but hugely excited to give it a go. Um, I remember clearly the first mistake I made. Um, that was a few weeks in when you start to feel as though you know what you're doing and you start to make the odd decision without checking with someone and I gave a go with urinary retention, a big dose of frucemide which kind of illustrates how little I knew about the job. I think the way we trained people, or the way I was trained, and hopefully you guys are not, was in little pockets of rules, rather than an understanding of the basis behind everything. I hope that makes sense. Um, I became an obstetrician by accident. Uh, this can be quite a long answer. So I always wanted to be a doctor, even though I didn't know what it was. When I came out of medical school and started to work, I started to get a little bit disillusioned. I had the idea that you could actually change the health of the population by being a doctor. It sounded a bit grandiose, but that's what I thought it was. And on reflection, I think looking back now, it, there's really kind of two types of medicine. There's acute medicine where you do hands-on service for people and you make a big difference to a small number of people, but you never alter a health statistic. The other kind of medicine is where you do public health or research and you make a small difference to a large number of people. And very, very rarely, and usually by chance, someone makes a big difference to a large number of people. But those are the exceptions, and if you go into it hoping to make a big difference to a large number of people, then you'll probably fail. I had such noble aspirations for medicine that when I realised that it was just a job to a lot of people, and when I realised that I wasn't going to save the world, surprisingly, um, I, I needed some space, I only needed some growing up to do, so I started off, I love hands-on stuff, so I started off doing A&E and trauma, and then I thought, I need a break, so I travelled for a bit, I sailed across the Atlantic, travelled around South America, um, spent some time working voluntary in Colombia, uh, and in Nicaragua there was a war going on at the time, it sounds much more exciting than it was, um, and just gradually just sort of resetting my clock. Then I came back thinking, well I've got to be a specialist in something, but not really sure what. I didn't, I by then decided not to be a trauma surgeon. Um, so I thought, well I might as well train to be a GP, and in those days you could 
uh, just do a bit of everything until you build up a kind of portfolio. So you could do a bit of ENT, which I did, a bit of general medicine, a bit of whatever, until you had a big enough portfolio to be a GP. You didn't have to see any exams. And as part of that, I did a year of Ops and Gynae. And I chose to do a year just because I was fed up with moving around. And I was really lucky to get in to a a sort of training post for obstetricians even though I wanted to be a GP and I thought I really like this I could do this more I like delivery of babies but still no plans to be a consultant um, I then gave up again for a while worked on boats made furniture thought I might be an artist met the girl who rapidly became the mother of my three children and felt I better have some stability and then got a registrar job in Ops and Gurney, still with no plans to be a consultant. I didn't see me as a consultant, square plug, round hole. Uh, and then it sort of happened by accident. I was just extremely lucky. Or, actually, which is what I'm going to come on to the last bit, I love my job and I was quite good at it. And that's all, that's all it takes. So I fell into posts I fell into a proper training position I fell into the last of the old senior registrar jobs I could go on about that but I won't um, and then as a result of that fell into the perfect consultant job at the perfect time so either somewhere if you believe in yin and yang someone's having a really shitty life somewhere or, uh, or actually it just sort of works out if you do what you love Um, so I'm in New Zealand now, uh, and on the way here, I stopped off for a couple of weeks in India. Um, my thing is fetal medicine, so diseases of unborn babies. And when I left the job in Fife, uh, some doctors from India who'd heard through friend of friend um, that I was available um, asked me to go over and see if I'd help them set up a fetal medicine clinic. And Initially, my thoughts were that the gulf of what I consider fetal medicine to what they consider fetal medicine was too wide. But last week, I met a guy out there who I thought had a similar approach to me. So I'm at the moment writing up a proposal as to how they might, what I think they might do to develop what I know as fetal medicine and what help I might be able to offer. Um, it's really exciting. It's not what I at all felt to do, but in line with the rest of my career, things just seem to fall in my lap. Uh, and why not? Uh, and I get, if nothing else, I get some free trips to India, which is an amazing place, and meet some really great people. In my spare time, I'll probably use up the rest of this memory card talking about this but in essence work-life balance is massively important if you love your job don't make sure that you love other stuff as well because I think the more you do outside medicine the more you'll love your job and then it becomes a positive feedback loop and you end up just happier and happier um, so all sorts of things so the benefit of medicine having a good social life or outdoor life is that you meet people and you can inter you can see their perspective better so when i was a student i worked as a dustman and i worked as a welder and i worked in a sheet metal work factory and a builder and you've got to be able to communicate with people to understand their experiences a bit and if you've worked in these sort of things then that is a huge advantage also i loved it and people taught me to weld and do other things for example uh, currently, I'm addicted to paragliding and I don't see that stopping until I can no longer walk up hills. I love sailing, I do a bit of scuba diving, I'm about to learn to kite surf. Um, I have a great life. Work-life balance is so important because it benefits both things. I also make stuff, and I won't go on about that more now, but I have a website, grahamtideman.com, if you want to see what I make. But open to commissions, available for projects. Um, so... Tying in again with a bit of advice is love your life as well as your job and then the two complement each other.
And finally, question seven. Uh, I've deleted this first time, so I'm going to do it again. But I'm going to give you a view of where I'm living while I do this one. Um, so, advice. Uh, well, the same advice I was given by a mentor. He was my first consultant when I was a junior doctor. And a truly lovely bloke. Uh, he was called Mike Lewis. And he just retired not long ago, down in South Wales. Um, and he just said, love your job and be good at it. And then you'll find a way. And when I went travelling, people told me that I would never get a career and I shouldn't do it. And these days people stress about MMC and how they've got to choose their specialty early. Um, and something else more terrible will come after MMC. Uh, but ignore this stuff. If you love your job and you're good at it, then it will find a way and you'll find the niche that suits you. And if you f are lucky enough to find your niche, then you'll benefit and your patients will benefit. Thank you. Goodbye from New Zealand. <laughs>